Do you want to paint amazing watercolor backgrounds? Then you need to get good at gradients. Hey, I'm Jackie. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to paint gorgeous watercolor gradients. For the best results, you need 100% cotton paper and professional quality paints. All the supplies I recommend are listed in the description. Now, let's make some watercolor magic. For these gradient examples, I'm using my three favorite primary colors, Thalo Blue Green Shade, New Gamboge, and Quinacridone Rose. These three colors mix well together and none of them are granulating. Let's start with a basic linear gradient. I'm going to paint a gradient that goes from pink to orange to yellow. I've taped my paper down and I will keep it flat. To get a super smooth gradient, I'm going to wet the paper first. I go over it a few times to make sure it has an even glossy shine. Then I'm going to start with my lightest color, yellow. Since my paper is flat, I don't have to start at the top, so I will load up my brush with yellow and start brushing it on from the bottom of the paper. I go from one side of the paper to the other while moving up the page. As I continue, there is less and less pigment on the brush, so the yellow starts to fade out. Now I clean my brush and load it with quinacridone rose. I'll start painting the pink at the top and bring it down the page. I want the pink darker at the top and then I bring it down and brush it right over the yellow. The two colors blend on the paper and make an orange color. I can continue adding more pink pigment until I'm happy with the gradient. I'm careful not to add any additional water to the paper. I dry my brush and use it to soak up the extra water pooling at the top corner. Then I use a tissue to wipe off the tape edges. Let's do another linear gradient. I've wet my paper again and this time I'm going to tilt my paper so we can use gravity to help make a smooth gradient. I like to place my masking tape under the top edge of my board to create a gentle angle. I'm going to make this gradient blue to green to yellow. Because my board is tilted, I want to start at the top and work my way down, so in this case I won't be starting with my lightest color. Instead, I'll start with a light mix of phthalo blue and bring it down the page. I don't want to make the blue too dark at the beginning. We'll come back to it after we add the yellow. Now I rinse my brush and load it with yellow. Instead of starting at the bottom, I'm going to start in the middle just above where the blue ends. Then I bring the yellow down to the bottom. It's not mixing much in the middle, so I add more yellow a little higher up and bring it down again. Now you can see the green. Because the paper is wet, I can continue to work on this gradient until I get a blend I'm happy with. I want a larger green section in the middle, so I will continue to blend that area. Since the board is tilted, the pigments move down the page creating a soft gradient. I use a tissue to wipe off the tape and soak up any excess water along the edges. Painting linear gradients is a fun way to get familiar with how your pigments mix. Pick two colors and blend them together to see what happens. Now let's take the basic linear gradient to the next level. We're going to create a reflected gradient where the gradient on the top of the page is reflected on the bottom. This is a super useful gradient to learn if you want to paint landscapes. For this gradient, I will keep the board flat. My paper is wet and has an even glossy sheen. I'm going to put in my lightest color first. So I load up my brush with yellow and put it right across the middle of the page. Imagine there is a horizon line and start there. That's the line we're going to reflect over. 
I'm going to angle the yellow down toward the left below the horizon. Then I'm going to angle it up toward the left above the horizon. Now, I want to start adding in my pink. I'll start from the top corner and quickly bring the pink down to meet the yellow and allow them to blend. I'll repeat that from the bottom right corner going up into the yellow. I always want to keep my paper evenly wet, so now that the whole paper has a first layer of paint, I can go back and add more pigment. As long as the paper is evenly wet, I can keep adding more paint. When I switch colors, I wash off my brush and blot it dry before reloading with paint. As your paper starts drying, you need to be careful not to add any additional water. Once I get the yellow and pinks as saturated as I want, I add some blue on my brush and paint it in the top right corner. It mixes with the pink on the paper and creates a purple. I blend it down into the pink. Then I repeat that at the bottom right corner. Now, I want to show you a great hack for smoothing out your gradients. If you start to see those little veins forming between colors, this will fix that. I take a completely dry, soft brush like this oval mop brush and use it to gently blend the transitions between colors. I gently brush it over the paper in a sweeping motion. The brush must be completely dry so you don't add any water to your paper. It must be soft so it doesn't leave behind any brush marks. Always smooth out the lighter areas first before working into the darker areas. This reflected gradient is done. If you added a distant shoreline with mountains or trees, you'd have an instant landscape. Now that we're warmed up, let's tackle the most difficult gradient, the radial gradient. I recommend practicing this a lot with one color before attempting to do it with multiple colors. I'm going to use thalo blue for this example. I have a large puddle of blue mixed up on my palette. I'm taking a little bit of that and diluting it even further to start. I like to use my half inch flat brush which covers the paper faster than my round brush. I start by painting a circle at the top of the paper, leaving the center white. I will build the gradient out from there. First, I want to add paint to the rest of the page to keep my paper evenly wet. Then, I can continue to add more blue pigment to create the gradient. I continue painting larger and larger circles, getting darker and darker toward the edges of the paper. Each time I reload my brush, I add a little more pigment into the mix. I don't add any extra water. Radial gradients are good for underwater scenes or a moonlit night. 
In my aerial beach tutorial, we used a radial gradient to paint the sea. When you've finished adding paint, you can use the smoothing hack to blend the transitions. So I'm using my dry oval mop brush to gently blend the pigment on the paper where I see those little veins of spreading pigment. Phthalo blue pigment travels pretty far and creates a lot of those little veins. If I don't blend them out, you'll see them in the finished gradient. The oval mop brush is totally dry and I'm wiping it off frequently on a dry tissue. I'm carefully dusting the paper in circular motions to smooth out the gradient. I hope you have fun practicing these wet on wet gradients. It's a foundational skill to improve your watercolors, plus they're very relaxing to paint. If you only have 10 minutes to paint, make a gradient. It's good practice and you can turn it into a finished painting later when you have more time.